Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Essentials with me, Maddie Flint. Today I'm going to be focusing on the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. I'm going to get right into it. So to start, I'm just going to talk about what actually happened because it seems like this whole thing has been circulating on Instagram and like Twitter more than it has been in the news. And you can turn on the radio and listen to people talking about it there. But it's been really hard to trust our sources nowadays. So what actually happened was that Putin sent military forces into Ukraine for denazification. The Ukrainian government is not a little marginalized democracy who needs immediate help from the US. But our administration would have you think that it is like that. And I'm not in any way saying that I don't believe that there is any kind of conflict going on or any kind of war. And, and there have been some tragedies already, but... Putin is being frowned upon for sending forces into Ukraine because the Ukrainian government acts like Nazis. That's what he's saying about it. And all the innocent civilians of both Russia and Ukraine have my prayers and I hope they all can get to safety, but the Ukrainian government is not good. And it would make sense that the US is so quick to jump on their side, seeing as our corrupt executive administration has a lot of financial dealings with them. So. Ukraine has a very busy history. They were part of the communist Soviet Union under Stalin, and they were victims of a terrible famine, which is not talked about that much because public schools focus on the Holocaust mostly, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't. It's all very important to learn about, but there also were famines in regions of the Soviet Union because Stalin was a terrible, terrible dictator. So then, Ukraine tried to break away and everything. It wasn't a satellite state anymore. And then they were controlled by the Polish in Western Ukraine in the late 20s and early 30s. And it took them a long time to break away from Polish rule. And during that time, Ukrainian language was actually banned from any, any higher education or government. And it was like a Polish language that they had to speak. So they finally got done with that. The Communist Party was supposed to have been banned, but I don't think they ever were 100%. So now we may wonder, why is the US even involved in the first place? Well, uh, Joe, Beta China Joe, <laughs> is most likely trying to make sure his family keeps their in with Ukraine for their own monetary beliefs. Um, I found an article from Senators in 2020 that mentions that Hunter Biden and Devin Archer engaged in numerous financial transactions with Chinese nationals who had deep connections to the Chinese government. These Chinese nationals included the founder of CEFC, China Energy Co., and chairman of the board for its subsidiary, the China Energy Fund Committee, the CE Fund. They also included... Um, an associate of that energy company, and they executed transactions for his companies. The connections to the Chinese government are extensive. So I mention that because we know that Joe has a link to China, but they're also linked to Ukraine through Hunter and through Devin Archer. And I'm going to get back to him and talk about why he's important in this whole thing. Devin Archer is a business partner and longtime friend of Joe and Hunter. He's known for financial corruption. And this guy's already been through a prison sentence for an incident where he stole money from a Native American tribal entity. And Archer and others had, quote, engaged in a fraudulent scheme that involved causing the Wakpomni Lake community, and I might have just butchered that, corporation, which was the Native American tribal entity, to issue a series of bonds, the quote-unquote tribal bonds, through lies and misrepresentations, unquote. He said he got the money through real estate, and this is Archer saying that, but he had really stolen from Native Americans. And mind you, he is a member of the political party here in the U.S. that claims to care the most for the justice of the indigenous peoples. These are the same people who would like to remove Native American mascots, all while ignoring the words of Native Americans around them so they can combat racism for them. Anyway... Both Hunter and Devin joined the board of Ukrainian energy giant Burisma in 2014. They're raking in money from all over the place through fraudulence and through backhanded dealings that the media is hiding from us. So this is why we shouldn't believe the media. 
Obviously, we don't want to see war. Innocent people always suffer the consequences of this, and we don't want to see our sons, brothers, uncles, and fathers getting drafted, people getting displaced and separated from their families, etc. But we can't blindly follow social media and the uproar of standing with Ukraine. I became a little bit more skeptical of everything after listening to Biden's joke of an address the other night, actually, because I had just come home, I was doing my homework, and my mom was like, Joe is on, do you want to watch him? So she and I watched him together, and he was just rambling and rambling about all this stuff that he was going to do, and everything that he said was about the future, because he hasn't done a thing while in office except destroy jobs, cause incredible inflation, rising gas costs, which today, I just noticed here in Cambridge, is actually at $4.19, which is outrageous. Um, and he's attempting to masquerade that in the name of helping Ukraine. There's also insane insulin prices, as if people with diabetes can just stop eating so they don't have to buy it. Contradictory mask policies, vaccine mandates, which helped us lose half our workforce in the country, media censorship, which cost us valuable knowledge from free-thinking doctors, increased segregation from equity acts, and civil unrest. So besides those things, he hasn't done anything. And he said he sides with Ukraine, and he plans on scaring Russia off, which will never happen. I think Trump would have been able to pull that off, but not Joe. So on top of his speech that was like putting icing on cardboard and saying it's going to taste like a really good homemade birthday cake, we have had a ton of videos surfacing on Twitter, probably Facebook, Instagram, I know, because I saw it on multiple accounts and probably other platforms online that are miscaptioned or just or they're just flat out misinformation there is a photo in particular of president Zelensky from december 6th of 2021 and it's been shared this year because of the conflict and is being captioned with ukraine's president is on the front lines fighting for his people president Zelensky has taken up arms and joined the troops to repel russian invasion and it's all trending and everything and it shows president Zelensky wearing military uniform and a helmet and all this stuff, but people are not looking into things before they read and believe everything that they read. We really should keep a critical distance while reading, especially on social media, so that we don't get so easily persuaded into things or taken in by propaganda of any kind. It doesn't just have to be in this circumstance. It can be, you guys know, and anybody who has social media knows how bad it's been as soon as Trump got in office because liberals were trying to take him out with everything they could possibly grasp onto. Under Biden, there's so much censorship and fake news, as Trump would say, because the executive administration that we have and other progressive corporations or institutions don't want American citizens to see how bad everything has gotten. They just want to censor everything and remove people like Candace Owens and Prager University posts so that no one will ever know any opposing information other than their mainstream agenda. And that's a big, big problem. It goes along with that whole like one party rule. That's not good. That's really not good. And here we also have problems with the UN and globalization, which is why Trump was so against them. And I really wish that Biden had just kept us out of it. But you know that wasn't ever going to happen. He was going to put us right back in immediately, and that's what he did. But our government is siding with Ukraine because it's corrupt. If we're going to help, we should be helping the innocent displaced civilians out of empathy and courtesy. It should have nothing to do with being financially greedy politicians who only think of themselves, which is what the Bidens are. Now, Russia apparently isn't in line with the UN, and this is why Putin is getting labeled as another Hitler. He does have like absolute authority, but he, he's not Hitler. He's not another Hitler. He didn't cause another Holocaust. He's just not in line with the global collective, and neither was Trump, so that's why he was continuously labeled as some belligerent fascist. If you're nationalistic in this country, in the eyes of a progressive leftist, you get labeled as an extremist, a national extremist. And these people are from a party who wants one party rule and government censorship. Communism in that way is just like fascism. The people lose their freedoms, they become poor, while the people in control suck up all the wealth and continue to get their way completely unopposed. And that's not what America is. 
So I don't think we should have anything to do with this conflict. We need to have more of an isolationist approach. We don't need to cut everybody off, but we really don't need to be so globally involved. It's going to give us more problems than benefits. The UN wants the whole globe connected. Everything would be shared. No one country would be too great. No one would have more than anyone else. In fact, principle nine of the UN's global compact says that we should encourage the development and diffusion of environmentally friendly technologies. And principle three also talks about collective bargaining. And then the rest is about labor and discrimination and environmental policies for all the countries to follow. Globalization can also cause job displacement in some countries too, because the competition isn't within one nation, it's external, so someone somewhere is doing it cheaper and people are importing goods for a lower price than what it would cost to manufacture here in America, for example. So we don't get that many American-made products anymore because we can get them cheaper from China. And that's not good either. People in their own home countries are going to lose jobs because someone else is doing the work for less. Okay, so in my opinion, and I'm not trying to force anybody to believe the way I believe, but I'm just putting it out there, we do not need some corrupt group of powerful, collective, progressive world leaders trying to come up in here and be peace gods. If a nation steps out of their line, look out. They want what they want. That's world communism. That's terrible. That should scare you. I don't know. It's just not very beneficial and it's going to get other innocent countries who have nothing to do with these conflicts between two other nations in trouble. The U.S. should have nothing to do with this Ukraine-Russia conflict. Ukraine is not in the U.N. Russia is disagreeing with the U.N. so now they're in trouble. We're in the U.N. so if Russia gets too close to any of these other little nations that are also part of the U.N., we're going to have to send our troops out. And it's all going to be the Biden administration's fault because they're terrible at negotiations, terrible at diplomacy, and they're not doing a good job leading our own country. Maybe now more people will get out there and vote for the right people to be in office because our country cannot keep running like this. And I really do hope that all of the innocent Ukrainians and civilians in Russia are able to get out of this safely because civilian casualties are just so terrible to hear about. Anybody could agree with that no matter what side of the conflict you want to pick to be on, but we really need to be discerning with what we're reading online and do our own research so that we know what is true and what's false. The media is not going to tell us otherwise. As we've learned from this whole pandemic that we have to take matters into our own hands. So I think I'm going to end it there. I hope that you guys have a great weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. And if you're listening on Friday, then happy Friday. So thanks again, everybody, for listening to another episode of The Essentials with me, Maddie Flint. And be sure to catch the next one next week right here on the BMG Network.